Praise the Lord. God bless you. Welcome again for another program. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for gathering us together from different parts of the world to listen to your own world. Father, many of us have been intimidated by the word of the devil, by the word of the agent of the devil, by negative utterances and statements made by occultic men and women and witches and wizards and our, in our neighborhood, by all evil invitation given to the devil into our foundation. But today, we are prepared to hear from you. Talk to us in the language that we will understand. That. Help us to play our own part according to your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome again in our midst. We want to talk about shaking the powers in the heavenlies. Shaking the powers in the heavenlies. Let us read from the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel. Let me read verse 1 first. And it says, In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. So with this understanding, in verse 2, Daniel started mourning towards heaven for three full weeks. As he was mourning, praying and fasting, he did something in verse 3. He said, I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Three whole weeks were fulfilled. Why was he praying? What motivated Daniel to pray? Why should you pray? Why should you even put fasting in some of your prayers? What are the things that should motivate you to pray? Let me tell you the background. The children of Israel committed sin. And God allowed their enemies to carry them out of their comfort zones. And scatter them all over the world. That's why today you have... American Jews, European Jews, British Jews, Russia Jews, just mention them. All over the world. But Jeremiah, one of the greatest prophets of that generation, saw what was about to happen to the children of Israel. And he told them to stop sinning, to amend their ways, but they never heard hear him. So in Jeremiah chapter 25, he prophesied and said, you people, if you continue in this sinful lifestyle, will be carried out of your comfort zone to another nations to other nations. But as he was telling them, he saw another vision that after 70 years, the Lord will have mercy upon them and bring them back. But what is the meaning of that? The heavens of the children of Israel were closed for 70 years. My brothers and sisters, our topic today says shaking the powers in the heavenlies. By the time that Daniel was praying, 
He has been a senior citizen, retired from active service under the kingdom of Babylon and the kingdom of Persia. So he was a small boy carried out, suffering for the sins of his ancestors. And the heavens of Israel, born and unborn, was closed for 70 years. And the children of Israel had struggled to escape for those 70 years. They couldn't. One day, after a long time, they started settling down in those countries, building houses, cultivating in the farmland, engaging in business and technologies. And they were able to make it outside the countries where they were carried to, in, to captives. So they relax. At the end of 70 years, none of them was ready to go back to Israel, Egypt. I mean, to their promised land, to the land of Israel, where they were carried out from. They were comfortable. They were in the leadership affairs. Nehemiah at that time was the minister of water resources. Ezra was a great priest. Daniel was in the government of Nebuchadnezzar, the government of Belshazzar, the government of, uh, what do you call him, Medes and Persia, Cyrus. But that time retired. He was the only person that in the third year of King Cyrus, I think the history was talking about King Cyrus being the son of Esther. So on the third year of the King of Cyrus, Esther having told his son Cyrus about the children of Israel, passed a decree that every child children of Israel should go back to their country and rebuild the temple of Jerusalem and the wall of Jerusalem that was broken by the enemies. But they were not ready. Their heaven was closed. Their heaven was blocked. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you something. You may be the richest man in the whole world. You may be the manager, the CEO, the director, the best of the best in your profession. But if you are where you are not supposed to be, the measure of your happiness will be too small to compare with what it should be. So physical success, most time is not the evidence of being in the will of God. The children of Israel were outside the will of God, but they had physical success, material blessings, financial blessings, academic blessings, scientific blessings. They were ruling in the whole world, but they were never happy. They were dislocated from where they're supposed to be. So don't be deceived. Nobody can be where he's supposed to be without relationship with God. They had no relationship with God in the land where God has given to their, their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yet they were, they were relaxed. Are you relaxed in prosperity without God? Are you comfortable in, in drugs, in human ritual? Are you prospering because you entered into one cult and you have material things around you? Are you comfortable like that man in the Luke chapter 16 that has never been sick or had the need of going to hospital? The Bible said that he failed sometimes every day of his life and has never suffered or lack for one day. But he was not in the will of God. He was outside the plan and the purpose of God. He was disconnected from where he's supposed to be to where he's not supposed to be. He had all the wealth around him. He had all the joy and happiness around him. But he was deceived and prepared to suffer everything he could not suffer where he was in the world in hellfire. And the Bible says one day he died and he found himself in hell. What shall he profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? Great question. 
What profit are you making outside God and they are comfortable? You are doing human sacrifice. You belong to cult. You have the gift of singing and the whole world will celebrate your music. You have the gift of preaching and the whole world will say you're a great preacher. You have the gift of, I mean, dealing with the demon, moving the demon from the head to the chest, but you can't cast them out. And people are saying you're a great man of God. You have the gift of prophecy. Like that man in Samaritan, Samarian, who bewitched the whole city of Samaria. Everybody said this is a great man, and he was happy. The children of Israel were once like that. Only Daniel understand the vision. Only Daniel knew that the heavens of Israel were closed. Only Daniel knew that there are blockages in the heavenlies. There were load blocks, multiple load blocks. All the children of Israel were getting were physical blessings on this earth without attachment to the creator of the whole universe. They need to go back to their country. My brothers and sisters, you need to come back to God. You need to think twice. Money cannot save your soul. Material wealth cannot give you what you need. The base of this life is nothing to compare with your relationship with God. Are you born again? Are you free from sin? Are you under the bondage of immorality? Are you like Cain that killed his Abel and killing his Abel? Are you defiling young boys and girls? Are you a hookup girl, a prostitute? And you're happy because all material things around you have the best car and fat bank account. These things are lighter than nothing and worse than useless. To me, such persons are done productive element before the creator of the whole universe. Let me tell you what Daniel said when he started praying to break the load block of the, that is in heavenlies against the children of Israel. In verse 12, he said, Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, he said, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy word were heard, and I am come for thy words. You see, when Daniel was praying, he was releasing the words. For the first time, for 70 years, the word of prayer in the family of Daniel, in the tribe of Daniel, in the nation where he came from, penetrated the third, into the third heaven. And God heard his word for the first time after 70 years. You may be in a great family with all the professions in the whole world. You may be in the great company of class people, of people who have made it. You may be a professional. You may gather the whole world in the whole world. But without reference to God, you are worse than useless before the Almighty God. So for the first time after 70 years, my brothers and sisters, the heaven of your family may have been blocked for many years. The heaven of your personal life may have been blocked for many years. It may be possible that nobody has married according to the will of God for many years in your family. It will be possible that all the places I've been to are wrong places. It will be possible that your family heaven is blocked. It will be possible that your whole tribe heaven are blocked. Even though you are making some progress here on earth, but it has no relationship with God, attachment to God, approval from God, you may be the drug baron. And you may have all the, world, the money in the whole world. You may be an internet froster. 
You may be living your life as a prostitute, a defiler of other people, a polluter of the generation you belong to. And you have everything on this world, but your heaven is blocked. Your father failed in penetrating. Your grandfather, your ancestors, nobody has made it. And it has approval from God. That day, when Daniel started praying, God said, Daniel, your word has entered into the third heaven and has scattered every satanic load block in the heavenlies. I heard your word. Daniel, I heard your word. But then he was wondering, if God has heard my word, if God has heard my prayers, if God has answered my prayers, why are still, uh, the children of Israel still suffering? Look at verse 13. God said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia would sue me one and twenty days. Twenty-one days. The answer was coming. And the prince of the kingdom of Persia, the demonic prince that is in charge of the government of Persia, spiritual being, personality, blocked the heaven and refused that the angel bringing the answer to Daniel should not come down and attend to the request of Daniel. Do you know what happened? Though the answer had been released, but it is blocked in the heavenlies. But Daniel did something very important that I want you to do always. He did not stop praying, number one. He did not stop believing God for the answer to his prayer, even though he has not seen it. He did not doubt God for the ability to penetrate the heavenlies and come down with his answers. So when God saw that Daniel refused to doubt, refused to stop praying, God sent Michael, one of the chief princes, and he came to help the angelic being from God coming down from heaven, that angel Michael started fighting that prince of Persia. The kingdom of darkness in the road block broke the road block and then command the other angel to bring the answer. He said in verse 14, before we pray, do you know what he said? He said, now, I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet, the vision is for many days. My brothers and sisters, the angelic being brought the answers and told Daniel the details of what was happening. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, he said, and has raised us up, we are together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where we're going. So when you start praying, we start breaking barriers, bondages, load blocks, satanic limitations. Know that you are no longer in this world, but you are sitting together with Christ in the heavenly village places. Don't forget, we are going to shake the powers in the heavenly, blocking the answers to our prayers over the years. Refusing that nobody will be profitable married in our family to a reasonable man or woman. Refusing that our business will not go forward. Or giving us fake prosperity that has no God in it. Drug barons, internet fosters, prostitution, lying to make money, or anything you are doing without God here on earth. I want you to start talking to God. I want you to ask God to empower your words to cross the satanic load block in the heavenlies 
and enter into the third, third heaven. And the answers to your prayers to come, breaking every barrier that is established in the heavenly places. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this moment. Because everyone in this program today, everyone that will ever engage themselves in this program later, all the people that are hearing your word, that have heard your word in this program, I'm asking that the blockages in their life shall be broken. Let every spiritual blockage, physical blockage, financial blockage, social blockage, academic matter, every hindrance to our breakthrough and prosperity and our relationship with God, let them be broken to pieces. I'm asking, O God of heaven, that you give us the stamina and the faith to believe you in our prayers and to trust that our prayers are being answered and to wait enough in faith until the answers manifest. I pray that the sicknesses in the life of everybody here and all kinds of problems will vanish and come back no more. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. Hope you like our content. I beg you to listen to the YouTube channel. Like and share, and then send your prayer request. And subscribe to this YouTube, please.